here is anywhere from 10, and a half, 10 inches to 15 inches. This dog's 13 and a quarter. I've got one that's 10 and three quarters that I'm fixing to bring up here so you can see, you know, these are the different tools that are in our toolbox for our working dog, okay? All right, I'm gonna go over this dog. We're gonna start from the nose all the way back to the tail. What makes this dog a Jack Russell? First of all, our breed standard calls for the dog to be at least 51% white. So you can have a dog that's colored all over here on the top and going down part of the legs, but as long as his belly's all white and his lower legs are all white, that's more than 51% white. So you need to make sure that you take really good pictures of whatever you send them into the JRTCA for registration uh, because they will determine the 51% white, okay? All right, this is, this is the 10 and 3 quarter inch terrier. Great for what? Talk to me. Groundhog. Groundhogs, yes. Groundhogs are little tiny things that can be up to, and I've got a, a picture of one uh, that will probably be shown tonight, that I just got a couple weeks ago that weighed almost 18 pounds. That's the largest groundhog I have ever seen. I've been hunting them for 30 years. Uh, but anyway, he was a big mama jama. Um, and so anyway, those little dogs, are the, the groundhogs are average around 10 pounds. 10, 8 to 10 pounds. And this terrier probably weighs about a pound. This one's going to weigh way more. So this one has got a better chance of getting to the groundhog more efficiently than this dog will. This dog will be is great for coon, for badger. He's a big boy and he can he can handle his, his stuff. She's a lot smaller, she's gonna have room to spar and move back and forth without injury. Okay? Alright, um, you can you can put her up. I just wanted everyone to see that you are different dogs for different tools in our toolbox. Alright, starting with this dog. First of all, oh I didn't bring a towel. Does anybody have a towel? Hey, um, Ted, do you have a towel? Because I, I want to go over bites and I can never get my towel. Um, Alright, first of all, what's the preferred bite? Scissor. Alright. And then what's acceptable? Level. Level. Okay. Unacceptable. Overshot, undershot. This is on the PowerPoint. I'm sorry. It's just not dark enough out here. Initially, we were supposed to have this indoors. Power presentation would have been fantastic. You, I've got all kinds of original photos that really helps to see what's right, what's wrong, what you prefer, and what you need. That, that's perfect. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, Sonia worked really hard on it. We just weren't prepared to have it outside. Tonight, if you come to dinner, uh, we're going to have these, these videos. They're going to be up on the wall. And I will be available if anybody has any questions. So I'm not going to give the presentation there, but at least you'll be able to see what I'm talking about today, okay? All right, so this dog does have a scissor bite, and we open the mouth and just spread the lips and take a look, and then he does have a scissor bite. Okay, now, I'm going to put him on the table because people ask me all the time, well, why is a scissor bite preferred over a level bite? Anybody else? want to ask me that question? If not, that's fine because I just asked it myself. Alright, I'm going to give you an example. Um, come here just a second. I want to show you something. Alright. I want you to put your fingers together like this, like you would. That is a certain, and as tight as you can get because I'm going to put, I'm going to put this rag on. This is a level bite. Fingers together, level. This is a scissor bite. Fingers together, tight. Okay? Alright, so we're going to pretend like this is quarry and we're going to put this in between our fingers. Just raise your fingers up. Now, press your fingers as hard as you can. He can't hold it. Give me a scissor bite. I want you to hold it as hard as you can. I can't. I mean, I can jerk it away from her. You know, I can make her take it away. Okay, thank you. But that is, gives you a visual as to why a scissor bite is more important or, or more effective 
and being able to take care of his his job in the ground than a level bike. Now, it also has to do with the incisors as well as the canines. The canines also walk, and the canines walk on a level bike as well. But the scissor bite, if the dog has to defend itself, is more effective. And that is why our breed standard is Jack Russell Terriers calls for preferred scissor bite. Level bite's acceptable. It can get the job done, but it's just not as effective, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go over more of the dog. All right, we want a nice, strong muzzle. Why a strong muzzle, people? Same thing as the teeth, right? This dog's gotta be able to go in there and protect itself. You gotta have a good, strong jaw and a strong muzzle, okay? All right, now, another thing that the JRTCA calls for is a stop. Tell me what a stop is on a dog. It's in between his eyes, right. We want this to come almost a straight down stop between the eyes. This has nothing to do whether or not this dog works well, but it is our breed skin. So it is a requirement, okay? Another thing that's important on a Jack Russell's head, and I've talked about it earlier in the medical part, is you want a nice almond eye. And an almond eye has kind of a slant to it. It's not a round eye, it has a slant to it. The slant makes the eye tighter to help keep debris out. And this dog has got a good almond eye. He doesn't have a round eye like I do have that little bitch that was up here a while ago it has more of a round eye. So she's gonna get more, more stuff in her eye, okay? But that's the purpose of an almond eye is to keep debris out. Now you want a nice flat top skull. You want V-shaped ears. Do we have V-shaped ears on this dog? Speak up, I want participation. Okay, yes. We have, we have the V-shaped ear here. You need to have a nice long neck, not too long, not too short, but this dog has got to be able to do this when he is sparring in the ground. That neck allows him to be able to retract and strike whenever he needs to, okay? Everybody got that? Understand why? All right, next thing we want is a dog to have nice straight legs coming down from his shoulder. Okay? We also want to make sure we've got a good laid back shoulder. A laid back shoulder is from the point of the shoulder to up here close to his withers, which is actually the point of the scapula. Okay? All right. Now, the reason why we want a nice laid back shoulder is because when the dog goes in the ground, if he has an upright shoulder, this, this shoulder only rotates approximately 15 degrees. So if you have a 45 degree shoulder versus a 60 degree shoulder, you're going to have a shoulder that's going to be able to move back further so that he's got, he takes up less room in the hole. Am I making sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Yes, if he can only go back 15 degrees, this shoulder is not going to be as efficient it's this shoulder that goes back 15 degrees. Does that make sense? Because you're taking up less room in the hole. Okay? All right, so that's why we want a nice laid back shoulder. Okay? Now I'm going to go over before I, before I lose it. Uh, I want to make sure you understand that it's important to have a good double coat. I can't tell you how many dogs that have been in the ground that I have worked that have worked around rocks, around roots, around, you know, uh, slate. Uh, in the ground that come out and they're bald. It's because they don't have a good, tight double coat to protect their skin. So you make sure you got a good, tight double coat. Doesn't matter if it's smooth, doesn't matter if it's broken or rough, and those are our three choices with Jack Russell Terriers. Just make sure it's a good, thick, nice double coat. Okay? Alright, next thing we got going here is we want pads, good, tight pads on our feet. This dog's got great feet. They're nice and tight, and they're round. Okay, that's what we call a cat-type foot. A splayed foot is whenever their toes are spread and you see the webbing in between them. They're not really webbing, but the tight, you know, the tightness between the toes. All right, 
because when they're digging, if they're splayed like this, those toes are going to be extremely sore by the time he continues to draw dirt back, rocks back, whatever he's pulling back. A good tight foot will not be a weak foot. It'll be a good, strong foot to be able to get the job done. Any questions so far? I'm trying not to linger here because I know that you guys want to do the, the locating and you really need to. It's going to be a fun part of the seminar. Okay. All right, so we want a nice, nice back with a with a good hand between on the low end. All right, and we don't want we want a slight rise in the low end, but not a roach back. We don't want a back that looks like this. We want a back that that lays nice and flat with just a slight arch in the low end. Okay. All right, want tail set to set up nice and high. It's we don't want the tail to come out that way down here. We don't want it to come out up here where we got what? What do we call that? Gay tail. gay tail. We don't want a gay tail. You're reaching the hole, you don't have a tail that reaches up and says, here, take me, then you're going to have a hard time grabbing that dog out of the ground. And that's the purpose. It's, that's what makes this dog a Jack Russell. Okay? All right. Now, we're going to go to a part of the dog that is a sensitive issue and has become that way over the last several years. We have got rear ends on our dogs that have, number one, gotten too long in the, in the thigh and are, quote, overangulated. Now, Sonia's got some great photos. We, we've worked really hard together to get some, some pictures, actual pictures of dogs and hid the identity but wanted you to see what too long a thigh and overangulation looks like. If you want to come up and look at this, please do after I finish going over the rest of the dog. We want slight angulation. We want to take a line from this dog's point of his hip and come straight down to the middle of the pad. And that's how you determine your dog's angulation. It's not with his legs out here like me. This dog can't do it because he's not overangulated. So, I mean, that's not how he wants to stand. But when you get a dog that stands with his feet about half a mile out back here, he's overangulated. That's how he's comfortable. He can't stand up underneath his cell. And a lot of times, you, if he does, if you make him stand under his cell, he's going to have a roach in his back because he's got all that leg that's sticking up underneath here where he's supposed to be standing. But instead he's standing out here and like I said, this dog can't really stand like that. Um, so you want, like I said, you want good angulation but you don't want to overdo it. Okay, because if you do, you're going, why? Because you're going to have a weak rear end. The dog cannot handle a day's work with that kind of thigh, with that, and, and when he gets in the ground, he's going to have a harder time because this dog has got to take his legs like this when he gets in the ground, and he's got to be able to move like this. And and if he's like this and he's long thud, his butt's going to be up in the air, and he, he's just not going to be efficient. It's not that he can't do it. It's what I tell people. If a dog's got enough of this right here, what is that? It's his heart. He's got enough heart and he's got enough brains. He is still going to be able to get the job done. But it's like me going right now and getting in a lifting contest with someone that's been training for that, that's built for that. I'm not. I might can get it done, but the other guy's going to just lift it and he's got it. You know, you know what I mean? you got dogs that if they're made right, it makes it easier and they're more efficient in the ground than a dog that is not made right. Okay, his heart still might get it done, but number one, he's more susceptible to injury, and especially if he gets in trouble on the ground, and you have to get him out because he physically can't get himself out. Okay, is there any questions? Mark, have I missed anything? Covered anything? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was just, I did. I talked about the, the, the 45 degree shoulder. Is, is, is optimal, okay, because it's more efficient. It can, it can lay back to what? What did I tell you, the angulation, it, it, will, it, will, uh, it will swing, how much? 15 degrees, so that shoulder can go back to what? 
30. Okay, and when that shoulder gets on back here where it's got to be at 50, you know, at 45 degree angle, he's, he has less room that he has to worry about. If he's got an upright shoulder, he, he's, he's taking up more room in the hole and he just is gonna be slower about getting where he needs to go. Once again, not that the heart and the mind doesn't want it, but the body might not be able to get it. Thank you very much. Shoulders, we, also on the shoulders, we don't want this big bulk muscle sticking out here. Why? He's in, once again, he's in the hole. If he's nice and narrow, he can move through the hole with, with less problems on these sides, taking up room in the ground. Okay? That dog's got to move through that hole with his front end, with his back end, all folded up underneath itself. And if he's got these bulky shoulders sticking out here like this, it's going to slow him down, get to the ground. Any questions, ma'am? Um,
Have you proven this dog to be a hunting dog? Just because he runs through a road around doesn't mean he'll go through a tight corner and work the groundhog. I'm telling you, I've seen it time and time again. So you're, you know, not that I'm not talking down the other events. What I'm saying is, is until that dog actually gets in the ground with Corey, you do not know you have the hunting instinct in your dog. Because there's a bunch of go-to-ground champions that will not go in the ground. Okay, there's a bunch of race dogs that will not go in the ground. And I'm, once again, I'm not talking down the other events. They're fun to do with your dogs. It gives them something to do. But please, if you have the opportunity, you know, pursue getting your dogs in the ground. Okay? And yes, ma'am? Okay. Um, all right. Now, everything that I have gone over with you with this dog as far as degrees of the shoulder movement and, and structure in general, how to measure, you know, true angulation and what position to put them in and la la la, just anything that I covered. Sonia has got a little handouts here. There's two books that I reference on all of my stuff. Anything that I have said has been documented from years. Okay? And those two books are on this list if you would like to get uh, a, a sheet that she's got ready to hand out to you. Uh, please do. Let me give a couple of giveaways real quick. Uh, I think this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. That way you'll have double opportunity. All right, I've got a couple things to give away. Thank y'all for coming. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't in.